Success is not built on success. It's built on failure. It's built on frustration. Sometimes it's built on catastrophe. Navjot Singh Sidhu. And Navjot hits the nail on the head. You ought to be learning more from your mistakes in learning how to trade than from your successes. I tell people all the time, when the market is going gangbusters and is flying up and any fool puts money in the market and sees it go up and think that they are a genius, just wait until the market starts rocking because they will end up losing everything. What do we tell you to do here every day? 10 to 15 minutes a day is all we ask following these charts day in and day out learning the nuances. Anybody who tells you this is easy, take my little class and you will make millions, wouldn't be telling you the truth because that's not the way it is. It's not rocket science, it's charting art, but in order to be an artist, you've got to practice. Ask Isak Perlman, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? He will tell you, practice. That is what it's all about, and that's what we do here every day. We're not a stock calling service or an education firm. I want you to practice with us. Let's jump into these charts. By the way, great training, profit and loss bands. We are bringing that to you. It is an unlisted training. It is in your show notes today. If you're a subscriber, if you're not, you need to go subscribe at chartingwealth.com for free. If you're watching us on YouTube, please click the bottom right-hand side of the screen and subscribe. It helps us with our numbers. And we love all of you who are subscribers at chartingwealth.com. Thank you so much. And of course, special shout out to our Patreon supporters and everyone who's purchased our book. What do we see going on? Stocks down for the day. The NASDAQ 100 really down. Bonds and gold are up. So let's look at what we see going on. Now, we've talked about the sentiment that we continue to see reflected where? In the derivative oscillator, a negative sentiment. Remember, derivative oscillator, and we put that training up for everyone who subscribes last night. I hope you took it. If you didn't, look in your show notes. It was on the derivative oscillator about oversold, over, oversold, overbought conditions that our derivative oscillator helps us to reflect. It's a triple smooth version of the relative strength index that is different than the price percent oscillator. That's why we use it. And it's been telling us some things about some market sentiment. Now, what do we see going on? Price percent oscillator is still heading up on the weekly chart. We still have a green up candle. A little bit of a pullback today, 0.40%. But again, we still see price movement. It's hit a higher high for the week. Candle's bigger than the prior week. We are already past Thursday, going into Friday. Again, you can see it's still going up some as far as price percent oscillator goes. Price is above the weekly, just barely there at the two-day. Now, we go from the weekly to the two-day chart. What do we see here? Well, the last two-day candle was on the 19th that ended on Wednesday. The, the latest two-day candle is only the first day of a two-day candle, and it's a red, pretty much a red doji. We can see the price percent oscillator heading down. Derivative oscillator still gaining upward momentum. So a bit of a pullback. Hasn't crossed over yet, but some weakness showing there. We'll see how that candle closes, because where it is right now is not a candle. We don't call it until it closes, won't close until the close of the market on Friday. We see down movement in the morning, big old wick on the bottom, bit of a wick on top, showing us some upward price movement, and then down a little further in the afternoon, but not plumbing the depths. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator never crossed over. It just sort of, it crossed over going down back on the morning of the 18th of February, and then just sort of stayed down, laminated a little bit, and then moved away in the morning on Thursday and in the afternoon. So we'll keep our eye on the S&P. We're seeing some weakness, but again, two-day and the weekly still going up. But that two-day getting awfully weak, and the weekly showing us some market sentiment uh, that is negative. Now, we're going to leave the S&P 500. We're going to go to the NASDAQ 100, down the most for the day, 0.93%. We see price is still well above the weekly, higher high, both in the candle body and the candle stick. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator losing momentum, but still positive. 
We go from the weekly to the two-day. What do we see there? Two-day chart, we have a red open box spinning top, which again means a slowdown in the up movement. We've got a wick on the top and the bottom, which again is showing us some price fluctuations there, not just clear up movement. And we see the derivative oscillator losing momentum for the first time in eight days. Uh, so this ninth day losing momentum. And of course, we see the price percent oscillators heading down, still positive, but heading down. We'll see how that candle finishes drawing. If it's a big up day on Friday, that could all change. Four hour chart, again, lots of down movement in the morning, and then some more down movement, uh, lots of fluctuation in the morning, then more down movement in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator had just crossed over, going up at the end of the day on Wednesday, and then rolling over, going down both in the morning and afternoon on Thursday. Now we transition from stocks to bonds. What do we see there? Up 0.78%. Now again, we would expect bonds and gold to be going up when stocks are going down, not like some of the signals we've seen this week where everything's going up. That shows you a market that's not moving the right way. Remember, bonds and gold tend to be safe havens when stocks aren't doing well, and the opposite is true. Bonds and gold aren't supposed to be doing well if the stock market's doing well, typically. Think about that. That tends to make sense. Not always the case, but is a great deal of the time. We don't like to see it when they're both going, all, when they're all going up together, all going down at the same time. That's bonds, stocks, and gold. Now, what do we see going on with bonds? We see the price percent oscillator heading up stronger, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum, prices hitting a higher high, bigger candle, prices above both the two-day and the weekly. That's good to see on the weekly chart. Go to the two-day chart, price well above the two-day trend line and the weekly, heading up on the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator gaining a little bit, on mo a little bit of momentum. First day of this latest two-day candle. Then we go to the four-hour candle. What do we see there? We see things booming up in the morning and uh, not quite reaching a higher high in the afternoon, but nonetheless moving up. And of course, as we look at things on bonds, we have been, of course, watching. We have been waiting. We saw when bonds flipped over going up on Tuesday afternoon. We know that some of you jumped, I'm sorry, Tuesday morning they flipped over. We know some of you jumped in Tuesday afternoon and of course we've already seen some decent appreciation there. We will continue to watch, see what there is to see in bonds and how long they will climb. We'll pay attention if the stock market continues to crash down. We would expect bonds continue to move up. So again, all the charts all the time, pay close attention to those trades. Now we're going to go from bonds lastly to gold which has been a booming. Gold, of course, crossed over going up on the weekly chart back on the week ending the 10th of January. And we've seen gold steadily, a couple of pullbacks, but most, uh, most of the time it's steadily been moving up. We've seen an acceleration here over the course of this week, biggest green up candle we've seen in several weeks. Derivative oscillator still losing momentum, but positive. Price percent oscillator, like we said, going up reaching a higher high in both candle body and stick. Go to the two-day chart. That two-day chart's looking beautiful, pushing through the Bollinger Band, which are a volatility band, showing you lots of volatility. And of course, we talked about back on Wednesday, the 19th close of the day, ask you how many people jumped in with that two-day recross. Well, it's beautiful. Derivative oscillator's gone positive. Price percent oscillator going up, bigger up candle. We'll see how that continues to move. Look at the four-hour chart. Slowing down a little bit in the afternoon, but booming up in the morning. Derivative oscillator losing a little bit at the end of the day. Price percent oscillator also. Things are looking nice in gold, looking nice in bonds. We'll see how things shake out on Friday. Don't forget, at the close of the market on Friday, we will be recording our comprehensive review and forecast for all of you. Thank you for everyone who's purchased our book. For uh, That's Charting Your Way to Wealth. Look for the link in the show notes. We'll be happy to get you an autographed copy. If you live overseas, just email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. We'll send you a PayPal invoice. If you live in the States, you can go through our Square account right there at the link 
in the show notes, and we'll send that book out to you wherever you are in the world. An autographed copy just for you. Appreciate all our Patreon members. Remember, with Patreon membership, you get all sorts of things. You get our Bitcoin training, you get our short chart training, long chart training, that once a month live question and answer special training session for our Patreon members all sorts of other good stuff. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.